It's American Gun Chick. And I'm James Edwards. And it's Gun Day Monday. Recently, a good friend and Tactical Response alumni invited me up to his home to learn more about scopes and optics. He said he appreciated what we were doing with my channel and wanted to see if he could get me into a better optic setup than the one I have. All right, so today I'm gonna to be looking at some optics and some different scopes and stuff because uh, the one I have on right now originally is just like a red dot scope and I don't know, I don't like it that much. It kind of, when I shoot the recoil makes it bounce off and it goes away and I've, I never felt like I was super accurate in any of my rifle classes because my scope I feel like sucks. <laughs> so I'm gonna do an upgrade to my scope. We're gonna ditch that scope and get a better one, a new one. And uh, I don't know much about scopes so James is gonna show me some different scopes and we're gonna test them out and see what's up. Okay what we're gonna start off with, I like this combination myself, I use it a lot, is a Trigicon 1x4 AccuPoint with a Burris red dot on a 45 degree offset it took me a little bit to get this figured out but I, I like it it works really really well for both distance and up close Try it this way. Yep. Now the dot should appear really quickly. Yeah. I'm assuming that it did because you I weren't just, looking for it. Yeah, I was just lining it up. Nice. Okay. This is cool. And what you can do is with this dial right here you can increase your magnification or decrease it. So go ahead and play with it and figure out where you want it as far as your magnification, right there. Now you see that green dot in the center of the crosshairs? Yeah. That's fiber optic. And you can actually control how bright that is with this dial here. You can close it off or increase it as to how you like it. That's another really nice option of this. The more light that hits this window right here, the brighter it will be. Interesting, that's cool. Those were all to the right and a little bit low. That's okay. As long as the group's good, that's all we're worried about right now because it's not actually sighted in for you. It's sighted in for me. Yeah. And the way I look through an optic with my eyes is going to be very different than the way you see it. All right. Now I'm going to try and go from here to there, here to there, back and forth. Let's see how I do. Pretty nice, just the way you transition. Can we go look at our grouping and see how we did? Yeah, we can walk down there and take a look at it if you want. All right, to. it's really not that difficult. Hey, but look at that. Yeah. I thought we shot off more rounds than that than five. Probably did, but that's fine. Some of oh, some of them are up here. Well, you have to get used to it, and that's a piston upper, so. I wasn't aiming for the head. Is that something <laughs> else? No. Oh. No. At one point in time, probably when you magnified in. Yeah. That gets bigger. Okay, what we got here is a ACOG, a Trigicon ACOG. This is another one of my favorite optics. So what we'll do is we'll have you go ahead and take a look through everything. Now this is set up for a right-handed shooter and you're left-handed, so it's going to be a little awkward when you try to find that green dot because you've got to pivot it in the opposite direction than what you're used to. So this scope is really nice, like there's no, uh, a lot of scopes, you kind of look in there, you got to adjust your face because there's that black fog. There's no black fog and the scope is really crystal clear. It's almost like more clear looking in this scope than looking in real life, you know? Mm -hmm. It is. 
So I see there's an arrow in there. It looks like a thermometer kind of. Do you put the arrow directly on the yes, the tip of target? the tip of the arrow, the triangle. Yeah. Will be at a hundred yards, and then. So do you see how the numbers in the optic break down? Yeah, there's like a four zero, and then that's all I see. Okay, each one of those segments is different yardage. So the point is a hundred. Below that point's two hundred. The top of the top of the bar that you're looking at in there is 300, 400, 500, 600. So that's something I'd have to learn about the little arrow thing because that's kind of French to me. And I like how the uh, the bright red arrow in here is really bright. So I don't even have to like close both eyes. I can kind of just keep it well, open. You can really see it. This is the fiber optic rod. And the more that you cover up, the dimmer that gets. You see that? Yeah. And then you can back it off. See how it's getting brighter? Yeah. I like it really bright though. You like it? Yeah. It really yeah. draws your eye to the target. So this is really nice too. Besides the ringing in my ears, because this is really loud, but this uh, scope is really nice, and this is really nice. It's super crystal clear in here. What we're going to have you try out now is an EOTech with a magnifier. Now this is a three times magnifier. And the nice thing about this is if you don't need any magnification, you just pop that off to the side. That's cool. Now something else about this, mm -hmm. a lot of people complain about these magnifiers because when you're looking through it, Oops. how close your head is to it. Is that the scope's gonna come smack me in the eye? But it won't. <laughs> yeah. It won't. All right, so now I'm shooting the EOTech with the, with the magnifier. Ooh, it smells like we're cooking hot dogs out here. <laughs> All right, now let's try it like this. I like it. I like how you can just do that, use that. Let's say you see something far, you gotta do long range shooting. Just do that, you can get them. It's up close, like there's a animal coming at you, you can just do that. and. Get it, so that's really nice. Well, another thing too that you can use for the, the magnifier for is identifying your target. Yeah, that's true too. So, you may not be shooting a coyote, you may be shooting somebody's German Shepherd. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah, because so, German Shepherds are awesome. Yeah, they are. <laughs> this is my wife's rifle. It's a Daniel Defense DDM V5 with an aim point PRO on it. Aim points, I don't even have to explain them, they're good. Everything Aimpoint makes is good, no doubt about it. But it is a single red dot. So let's go ahead and run this gun before the farmer starts to pull the bean field out behind us. Okay. Oh, Alright, so, so far, this is a pretty good uh, red dot sight because when you shoot it, you know, the red dot stays there, it doesn't go away or anything. Um, so, I think it's pretty good if you're doing like a fighting rifle class and you can't see the target like as clear as some of them because it's, you know, not for, it's not uh, magnified. But, it's pretty, it's a pretty good red dot. And I like how you can change the brightness to what you want, that's really nice. It's nice. I like that transition of going like this and turning it like that. We were briefly interrupted by the soybean farmer. I've never seen one of these before.
my hits were because there's so many bullets there or holes, but uh, I could definitely see my target and I could definitely see where the red arrow was on the target. So. Well, and all your shots were in the kill box, and that's the important thing. We're not trying to knock the little orange out, we're just trying to stop a threat. And that was effective in stopping the threat. So, putting them all in the three inch circle at 50 yards, I'm happy with that considering it's not completely stable. All right, so I had some time to think about it and really test them all out and look at all of them. And they're all really good. They're, these are some top notch uh, sights, scopes, all that. But some of them are better for other things, like uh, like the red dot one here. This one's good if you know you're really close on close distance. You, it's just like you're taking a fighting rifle class or something. But some of them, like the Trijicon, ACOG, or this one, if you're like really far, like you're trying to shoot some Tannerite or you're trying to get like a deer, like you're out hunting or something, these are going to be really good. So out of all of them, I will tell you my decision and. The site that I'm going to go with is all of them because they're all really good. So we're just taking all of them. <laughs> so thank you, James. Let's, let's start packing these up and we'll get out of here. Rifles too, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we're too lazy to take the scopes off. So we're just going to take the rifles with us too. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Drum roll. All right. Now the judges have decided and the scope that will stay with us will be this one right here. I think this one is the best one for what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to explode Tannerite in the future and do some dope cool stuff and this is really gonna help me to really put that Tannerite like maybe really far and I could do uh, bigger bundles of Tannerite. You know I could start doing five pounds, ten pounds, whatever I want. But also I have this right here and this is really important because I'm gonna be taking obviously more tactical classes and running the gun more so I think this is a good fit for the stag rifle so what do you think let's get it mounted up and let you run it is that a good choice and so we took my rifle my uh beautiful stag rifle and we went to uh mount that on there well james did to mount that on there and we ran into some problems what we ended up finding out is because this is a left-handed rifle and the way they designed it for the ejection port cover to go down it would cover the controls so they have to have it go up. Well, with the mount that we have for this optic, it's on the same side as the gun. So it would have held the, the ejection port down. We can't have that. So we had to go with a Vortex Spark. The other issue we ran into, just by the design of the rifle the way it is, it's not an attached forearm grip. So there's play in it. So we couldn't mount the red dot the reflex sight to it and have it hold zero. So what we ended up doing, like I said, is we put the spark on her her glamour gun. My glamour gun, I like that word. <laughs> we'll call it a glamour gun, because it is sharp. Um, and we put everything back on this, and this is an Anderson lower and a SIG 556 piston upper, which now belongs to you. Now belongs to you. Now belongs to you. Wait, what? But when I first found Raquel on, on YouTube and I watched her video, it really reminded me of my adopted daughters when they started shooting. Um, the inexperience, the lessons that she was learning as she was progressing through all this. And then I had the pleasure of meeting her down at Tactical Response. And she really impressed me because she's a genuine person. Um, she's not out here acting. What you see is what you get. And uh, that's hard to find nowadays. Nobody starts out knowing everything about this. And it takes a lot of time on the trigger to get good at it. And that's where she is at right now. She's working through all this. I think she's going to succeed in this if she stays with it, which I'm sure she will. Um, and now that I'm shooting with her a little bit more, She's just a fun person to be around. She laughs, she jokes, um, she listens really well. She was putting, putting bullets on the bullseye. And at the end of the day, that's what counts. As long as I'm able to, I am gonna support people that want to shoot. And uh, I'm willing to, to put forth the equipment and the time to do it. Because that's, that's, that's where the rubber meets the highway.
That's just the way it is. You have to get them out. You have to teach them that it's enjoyable. You have to teach them to do it safely. You have to teach them to be responsible. And, and that, that, to me, that's why, that's why Brickell is here with me today. That's why I'm helping her out the way I'm helping her out because I think she's really doing a good thing. And I think she has a lot of potential to bring, especially a lot of females, into defensive shooting. And like I said, that's why I'm doing this. So thank you very much. I just want to uh, say thank you to James. He gave me this gun and he didn't have to do that. He just did it out of the goodness of his heart because he's a fellow alumni and he He's been watching my videos and he likes what I do, so he wanted to help me out. He's like, you know, come over here and we'll fix your scope and we'll get it all taken care of. But that wouldn't fit, so he was just like, here you go. I'm like, wow. It's the only so way much. we could make it work with what we had on hand. So, and it's, uh, it's a good shooting rifle. It will serve yeah. you well. It will, it's a good training rifle. A gun like this, when it's all done up really, really pretty like it is, you don't want to be jamming it through glass and mud and, and everything else yeah. that goes along. Not that the gun can't handle it. Stag makes some fine firearms. I've never had an issue with any of them I've ever owned. Um, and I hated to get rid of the ones that I did get rid of because they went to my girls, but such is life. I wanna say thank you to you for helping me and also not only for providing things, but for teaching me because before I didn't really understand like why I was off, you know, with the, with the red dot I had, but I would sight it in, but it still wasn't like, I was never really super comfortable with it. That's what happened today. It was a great day. We're having a great time out here, but uh, we're gonna wrap it up because the sun's going down. So uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that so you can see my adventures. And also, I wanna say thank you to my Patreons. Thank you for your support. And if you guys wanna be a Patreon, go to my, my uh, Patreon page and you can see that the not the bloopers, but like the background and the extended version of this whole day, the unedited version. So go to Patreon and you can see exclusive stuff and see what's going on over there. And make sure you stay tuned for more Gun Day Mondays. These are uh, Beach and Tactical Slings, and uh, Jacob Peterson makes these. He's a fellow alumni, but they're speed slings, so you can, you know, rock them like this, or you can throw them on your back. You just gotta tighten it up like that. So, wear it like that. But if you come over here to this table, we got pink like this, but we got, actually this one's mine, but we got more colors. We got camo here. Um, this one's just like a black. This one's like a tan color. And I only got 10 of them. So I'll leave the link below and come get them right now because they'll probably sell out pretty quick. But these are pretty cool. And I want to thank uh, Jacob Peterson with Beach and Tactical. You can check him out at beachandtactical.com. But his slings are pretty dope. So check him out. Go to Beach and Tactical on Facebook and let him know that I sent you there and tell him thank you for giving me these. <laughs>